Uh, yeah, I'll do a couple. I've okay. yeah. right. I've kind of allotted about 30, 40 minutes. All right. Thank you. Hey, Julia. Hey, how's it going? Come on, man. How are you doing? Good. Do we want to go early, bud? If he's ready, let's go. Wow, I've got a fancy mic. Cool. Welcome to the 2021 U.S. Open Championship. We are here in the interview area with six-time major champion Phil Mickelson. Phil, just start a little bit a reaction to the whirlwind of the last few weeks. It's uh, been ex it's been a really fun last few weeks, and it's exciting to have a major championship here where I grew up in San Diego at uh, Torrey Pines, and then to come in to this event as the most recent major winner is special as well. But um, I'm I'm really looking forward to the week and excited about the way this will showcase to the world what it, uh, what a great job everyone's done to get this course ready and and uh, how beautiful it is. Talk a little bit more about your love of San Diego, golf in this area, and, and again, playing a U.S. Open here. It's been a special place for me to grow up and play our high school matches, play a lot of golf out here as a municipal course. To uh, make the course open to the masses is uh, a special thing, and to have a major championship on that venue is uh, exciting. So uh, although it's a lot different than when I grew up, 35 years ago, it uh, still is a, a special site, and uh, it's in remarkable shape. Much like, you know, at Pebble, this is a, a course you guys see often, but talk about the differences of what you're seeing out here this week in terms of a U.S. Open setup. So when we play here at Torrey Pines, it's in February, the golf course is uh, a, a lot wetter and plays a lot longer. What starts to come out are the subtleties and the nuances, and with the fairways being contoured as they are, and being firm now, they're going to be more difficult to hit. you got to shape it into the fairways. And um, the greens are very challenging. There's a lot of pitch, a lot of contour. And as they get firmer, like we saw today from just a couple of days ago, they're uh, significantly firmer than just last two days. It's very difficult to get it to some of the pin positions. And it's going to be a difficult test. It's As long as it is at sea level, uh, it's going to be a difficult test. but. Uh, it seems like the setup is pristine, and, and uh, it's going to be a fun, fair, difficult challenge. We're going to go to Damon. Phil, this golf course has evolved quite a bit from when you first started playing it, and even since you first started winning here. But what knowledge can you lean on this week that might help you? So I feel like, uh, well, what's happened for me is I spent so many hours as a kid that when the course was redesigned, all that local knowledge went away. And I, I really haven't come out here and spent a ton of time. It's hard to get a tee time out here, and and um, when you do, it's a long it's a long round. So I don't spend a lot of time out here other than the farmers, and um, I really made an effort here, having the last um, week off to spend time out here and really learn relearn the green. So I've spent a lot of hours out here on the greens last week to see if I can get that uh, local knowledge uh, again, and uh, we'll, we'll we'll see how it goes, but. Um, I had a lot of fun kind of relearning and spending a lot of time out here. What was your day like with Akshay Batia, another young left-hander who you've kind of taken under your wing? I, I mean, I love seeing left-handed golfers thrive. And last uh, yesterday, watching a, a, a young lefty win on tour for the first time was, uh, was impressive. And Akshay is not far behind. I mean, he's a very impressive uh, golfer. And, and uh, I think he's going to have a lot of success and a long career. Right here. Hey, Phil, uh, Tim spoke about just the, the self-belief you had before the PGA. Um, when you win a tournament like that and you have that kind of confirmed, how much more does that grow after the fact? I mean, it's a big thing. It's, a, it's, a, it's one thing when you are playing at a certain level but not getting the results. It's very frustrating, and it's tough to be patient. But when you know that you're playing at a certain level and you are patient and it finally does click like it did at the PGA, I felt like I'd been playing at that level for a couple of months, but I wasn't getting it out. And then when it all comes together at a perfect time like that was uh, exciting to, to, to put it together. And I feel like, um, or I'm hopeful that some of the things that I have learned heading in will, will, will carry over and give me some more opportunities this summer because uh, I feel like I'm playing some good golf. And the, uh, the tweet you had before the tournament about accepting failure really kind of took off after that and seemed to resonate with a lot of people. I was curious what your reaction was to seeing that after the fact? 
Well, it's it's uh, challenging when, um, like I was saying, when you continue to work hard, do the right things, and see the progress but not get the results. It's very frustrating. And a lot of times people will stop or quit and because they're just not getting out of it what they feel they're putting into it. But you kind of learn in plateaus. And when every now and then um, you might be working hard, working hard, doing the right things and not getting any progress, and then all of a sudden you'll get a spike. And that spike came at the PGA to where it all kind of comes together and you, you, you put it all together and it was at the right time. And um, you see, hopefully I'll, I'll continue to play at a, at a new plateau at a little bit higher level because um, some things started to click. Uh, camera all the way on the right. Oh, sorry, not a camera, but oh. <laughs> apologies. I didn't know you were talking to me. So at the Ocean Course final round on Sunday on 16, I don't know that this got talked about a ton, but I think you hit at 366 off the tee there, which might have been the longest ball all weekend. Um, you're up two strokes at the time. Some players might protect a little bit. Can you talk about the decision to go for it there and if it reflects your confidence that your game is at right now in terms of that shot? The last two holes are re really difficult at Kiowa, and I knew that um, there were going to be birdies there, whether it was from Louie or Brooks, and that to maintain that lead, I needed to make a four. And fortunately, I hit a good drive. The fairway was wide enough. It was downwind, a little right to left, and I hit a good drive that rode the wind, and fairways were firm, and, and it got out there pretty good, where I was able to hit a six iron just over the back and um, allowed for a pretty easy up and down four. And that, that was a critical shot because like I say, those last two holes are, are very difficult. And um, I drove it well that week. I mean, I drove it well. And when I did miss the fairway, it was just off the edge. And that was a big thing. It'll be a big thing here, too. Right behind me and then Doug. Hey, Phil. Uh, I have two things kind of not really related. First of all, what did you do when you got back uh, to in, just to bask in Kiwa and, and whatnot with the Wanamaker? And are there any specific things you, you were able to do before you started getting back back to it a little bit? Um, well, I came right home that night and celebrated with Amy the next couple of days, and then I went and played Colonial. And um, I took the weekend, because I missed the, missed the cut, I took the weekend uh, to kind of hang out and enjoy it. But then on Monday, I got back to work trying to get ready uh, for this tournament. It's a unique opportunity because uh, I've never won a U.S. Open. It's in my backyard. Um, I have a chance to prepare properly, and I wanted to put in the right work. So. Uh, I've kind of shut off all the noise. I've shut off my phone. I've shut off uh, a lot of the other stuff to where I can kind of focus in on this week and really give it my best chance to try to play my best. Now, you always need some luck. You always need things to kind of come together and click. But um, I know that I'm playing well, and I just wanted to give myself every opportunity to be and play at my best. And so I t started working uh, Monday shortly thereafter. And just as a follow to that, you just spoke about that spike and kind of, you know, you were waiting for that to come and it came at Kiwa. What what has that? Because obviously everybody looks at your win as, as a pretty unlikely win at, at Kiwa because of, the, you know, whatever the course setup, you know, you know, the drill. What has that done for you now as you walk into this week, regardless of where it's at, just in general with your form? Um. Well, you have those, you just have those moments where you just kind of know that things have clicked or whatever. And I went out and um, had played a number of rounds of golf where the game just started to feel easy again. I was able to hit the ball and play. I was not hitting it close, making some putts. It just started to feel easy again. And when I went out on tour, um, I wasn't quite putting it together um, day in and day out like I was at home, but I knew it was just a matter of time. And so, um, I had seen the progress. I knew that I was going to win again soon, but the results weren't telling anybody else that. So unless you were really playing and with me day to day, you wouldn't have seen the progress either. Uh, but it's it's um, exciting to, to be able to put it together like that when nobody expects it. Doug. Phil, can you, can you give us an idea of what kind of work you put in last week, how much time you're out here, exactly what you were you know, concentrating on the most? Um, I put a lot of time in on the greens because even though they're not at tournament speed, I needed to kind of relearn and, and see the, the breaks and know what the ball does on these greens because then when you see the way the ball rolls, you know where you have to be for your approach and you know what kind of shot is the, the best shot to hit into uh, certain approaches. And granted, I've played out here a bunch since the redo, but I really haven't spent a lot of time to learn the nuances, and I did that uh, early last week. And secondly, I'm just curious, what exactly were you and Bryson doing 
uh, on 18 when he was filming and you were flopping? Um, it was fascinating to look at. There's a um, kind of a misunderstanding on how the flop shot or, you know, uh, works. Bryson and Chris Como, they understand it, which is you hit the ground first and then the ball, the club bounces into the ball. And most people try to kind of like flip with their hands and catch the ball first. And they were getting a close up of how I drive the club into the ground first and then it bounces into the ball. So it's just, um, I guess there was a, a conversation amongst a, a bunch of guys and uh, Chris just wanted to show the evidence because 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 he was he's right in that you actually hit the ground first before on a flop shot behind me. Uh Phil, I'm interested in your uh, friendship with Tom Brady and if you've gleaned anything from that uh, as to uh, competitors and, and sort of where his game is and, and what you've maybe picked up from him. So I've been fortunate to spend time with him, and when I'm around him, I learn a lot. I learn a lot by just watching and observing the dedication, the hard work. I mean, when we would go play at Augusta and he'd stay at the cottages, he would be up hours before we'd play. He'd go to the gym and he'd do just a bunch of band work for an hour, just getting his shoulders and his knees and his hips and everything firing and activated. And um, he was very disciplined in what he eats and, and, and recovery and taking uh, the time to do the right uh, things after the round and, and so forth. And it's inspiring to see because when you see somebody do it and do something what he's doing which is play football at the highest level at, a, at an age that really nobody else has ever done it uh, it's inspiring and it's motivating and then when you see it happen it's much easier to do right here go ahead oh i was just going to ask about his his game he, he obviously hold out on that that shot when he was really down i wonder if there were things you saw that sort of re reflected the kind of competitor he is. So he played really well the back nine. And when we've played, he's, he plays a lot better than what you saw in the front. He just hadn't been playing at that time. And so his game wasn't sharp, and he just didn't uh, quite have it that day. And it almost made him more human uh, because he, is, he excels at everything he does. To see him struggle like that was, was very humanizing. I thought, uh, I thought it was a good thing. And then the back nine, he kind of clutched up and played and hit some shots, and, and we made a good move and move at it and, and uh, ended up losing one up. But uh, the way he can mentally slow down when things aren't going well and process it and then uh, start to perform is, is, an, is another trait that you learn from him. Here, center right. Phil, you've played a lot of golf with Xander and got to know him a little bit. Um, you know, he's had a lot of second places. Uh, you've had some close calls, at least in this tournament before. Um, it's too much made about him not winning and, and being in second. And, and how big a leap is it to be a top five in a major and win a major? So I would just say that I was 33 when I won my first major. He's significantly younger than that, and he is an incredible talent. Uh, he is he's easily to see one of the best players in the world today, and his game is so complete with no weaknesses that uh, I really get a lot out of playing with him and watching him watching how he does things. Uh, it's a little bit different in places than I do it, but I still learn from it. And uh, I, think he's, uh, I think he's just that rare talent. And like I say, when you learn in plateaus, when you get that spike, once he gets that spike, I think he's going to stay at that, at that new level uh, for a long, long time. And one other subject, what's your thoughts on arm lock putters? I don't, I don't really have any thoughts. I mean, um, it's been around for quite a while. Um, and um, it works for, for some, and um, I think it's worth a try I, I th for, for, for a lot of guys. It's not really for me, but I think it, it could really work for a lot of people. I don't know. Behind me. Phil, could you give us your best story about 2008, the first two rounds, where they had that one, two, three pairing? I mean, I know it was a bit of a zoo out there with Adam and Tiger, but you got a good little story for us from those two days? Uh, I, I don't have any like particular um, funny stories. I, I remember the Tiger bogey or double bogey the first hole, and I think he did it both days and still won the tournament. And I thought that was pretty inspiring, the way he didn't let that affect him. He stayed to his game plan, stayed focused, stayed patient, and ended up kind of picking in spots where he could get a shot back here or there, and he did, and he ended up winning. I mean, that's impressive. See, that, that Friday afternoon when, it, when he made that little run, it just seemed mental out there. I was here as a young spectator myself. It just 
I don't really remember the run. I just I, I don't remember uh, a lot about that. It was 13 years ago, and I just I don't remember no the worries. details of it. Yeah. Thanks, Mike. Final three here on the right in the green. Phil, what kind of advice do you give Akshay uh, playing in his first major in that practice round today? Not not too much. I mean, he might he has as many questions for me as I have for him. You know, I I'm. Uh, Curious how he does things too, because he's got uh, you know a lot of club head speed, a lot of strength, a lot of shot making. Uh, he might ask me a few things on chipping. I might ask him a few things on clubs. I mean, I always see our new equipment at Callaway in his bag. So uh, uh, he had a new a new hybrid, a new three wood. I haven't seen those yet, and um, it was uh, it's always fun to go through a, a, a bag of another left handed player. Todd, hey Phil, um, hey Todd, for you real quick. Um, Beyond the redesign of the South Course, how much has this property changed since you first started playing here? The lack of trees in particular, I mean, we've, it just seems so much different than when you first started playing here. How do you view that? Is that a positive, negative? I mean, the evolution of the course has been so slow over the years, you almost don't notice it unless, until you look at 30 years ago and today. But... The views seem to be more open. Um, I like the way some of the holes have gotten rid of some of the rough to open up the canyon and bring that in play and allow it to be a little bit more friendly for the average guy, but yet difficult for the good player because the canyon's in play. 17's a good example. There used to be a lot more rough on the left side. Now the canyon's the, the hazard. I think that's cool. Um, but the views without as many thick, dense trees certainly open up the ocean views and make it uh, spectacular. Mini driver this week, what's going into the bag from a mini driver standpoint? Uh, just a two wood, I call it a two wood, it's a mini driver, but just a two wood. I, I think um, at least half, if not a fraction more of tee shots will be with that club just because the way the fairways are a little bit firmer than farmers, uh, the ball runs out so it gets down there in a pretty good spot and there's a lot of holes where it kind of turns or tightens, and I don't really want to get to that spot. I mean, if you look at four, you get it down too far, it starts to pinch in by the canyon, and you look at the contour on seven, how much that fairway pitches. I really don't want to get it down there. So uh, that mini, that two wood, I'll call it, is um, seems to fit the right yardage on a lot of those holes for me. Different from Kiwa? The, the different club from Kiwa? So I go through a few uh, heads, um, and this is a different – head than I had there, but it's same loft and same, just about as same as can be. Last question, Bob. Phil, uh, your, your comments earlier about coming out and trying to learn the course, you know, last week or whatever, is it fair to say that you, you maybe fought that a little bit over the years after the redesign? I mean, did you just not want to take that on? Were you stubborn or how do you, how do you? Yeah, maybe, it? maybe, I, I don't know. Um, there's a, a proper way to play here. I mean, Tigers won here eight or nine times, and there's a proper way to play here to each pin, and I just uh, have tried to do too much in the past. And if I, I felt like if I could learn the greens and know what a lot of the 30- and 40-foot putts do, then I don't have to try to get it into these tiny little um, shelves, and I can uh, make easy pars and make a few of the longer putts. That was kind of my thought process. And that uh, will hopefully allow me to play it a little bit more stress-free. So I'm not trying to take on too much. Um, also, a, a typical thing of Reese Jones is that every bunker, the green goes away. So there's, there's, uh, if you wherever a bunker is, the green is pitched away. And so you really can't short side yourself because you can't get it up and down out of those bunkers that are um, pitched away. Now, all most on tour, the average course we play, if you were to have a bunker shot, it's 10 yards. That's the average shot, 30 feet, right? So, but here, because of the way it angles away, it's 15 yards. So it's a little bit longer uh, bunker shot than what we would average on in any other golf course. That also makes it harder to stop it on those short side shelves. So knowing to play away from the pin or have it, uh, being able to play away from the pin, give myself 30 or 40 feet, if I know the break, if I know the read and believe I can make it, then I'm more inclined to not force the issue and not press. That was my whole thought process. Also, also the, the idea that, you know, this is obviously it's your home, but after you became a pro, 
would you, would there have been in any instances when you when you're coming out here to play in between tournaments? You know, at, here at Torrey Pines. I mean, obviously you've got your home course, other places to practice. It's crowded. So I mean, I'm just trying to get a sense for is it, it a, is it a place you really have played a lot in the last twenty some odd years since? You know, no, it's not. I mean, I don't play it other than the tournament. Right. Yeah, I play the tournament week and. And then we're still playing the other course, so I try to play practice rounds over there. So I haven't really, uh, and I've only played kind of half the two, half the days a lot of times here too. So um, I haven't spent a lot of as much time on here as I, I should to really know it until recently. Thank you. Thanks for your time, Phil. Good luck cool. this week. Thanks, guys.